Operational controls and gauges. Ignition key. Off position, on or run position, and start position. After starting your tractor, allow a minute or two of warm-up time for the engine and hydraulics before beginning operation. Allow additional time in extremely cold weather. Light switch. Power takeoff or PTO switch for engaging the electric clutch drive that powers the front mounted attachment. Voltmeter gauge. Engine coolant temperature gauge for engines which are liquid cooled. Engine oil pressure light. The light will go off after the required engine oil pressure is reached. Fasten seat belt light. Glow plug indicator light. When starting diesel engines, turn the ignition key to the on position and light will come on. When it shuts off, proceed to start the engine. Choke for a gasoline engine. Throttle lever to set the engine RPMs. Tachometer and hour meter. Seat slide lever. Front auxiliary hydraulic quick couplers for operating attachment hydraulics. Attachment lock lever locks the front mounted attachments to the tractor hitch. PTO belt tension lever. Lever must be down when installing the PTO belt to the front attachment. After installing the belt, return lever to the up position. SDLA lever. The SDLA is the primary control for the tractor and consists of two parts. The front, taller lever is the primary lever and controls the travel speed, direction, and front lift of the tractor. The shorter, rear lever is the secondary lever and controls the auxiliary hydraulic circuit through the front quick couplers. To operate speed and direction, the selector park lever must be in the middle or up position and the operator must be seated in the seat. The distance the lever is moved forward or backward determines the ground speed of the tractor and the direction it travels. Moving the primary lever to the left raises the front hitch. To the right lowers the hitch. Hitch flotation is obtained by continuing the movement to the right until the detent locks the lever in the float position. This allows the front attachment to move up and down independently of the tractor when mowing, blading, or when this function is desired. Selector Park Lever With the lever in the down position, the park brake is applied. The lever must be in this position when starting the tractor. Moving the selector lever upward into the middle position releases the park brake and the SDLA lever which allows the tractor to be operated in a return to neutral function. This is the recommended position when learning the operation of the Ventrac, loading or unloading, attaching and removing attachments, and whenever the operator is working in tight areas or unsure of the tractor's response to the task being performed. Moving the selector lever to the up position allows the SDLA to be in the easy shift mode. This position is often used for operating the tractor in open areas where travel speed and direction are relatively constant and control is easily maintained. Easy shift reduces operator arm fatigue when using an attachment requiring frequent forward and reverse motions for a prolonged period of time, such as when pushing snow. Remember, never leave the seat of the tractor without first putting the selector lever in the park position. This engages the park brake and locks the SDLA control lever so it cannot be moved. Weight transfer. This is a standard feature on the model 4200 tractor and is optional on the 4100. The weight transfer system allows the operator to transfer a percentage of the front mounted attachment weight onto the tractor. Transferring weight improves traction and hillside stability, aids in lifting, reduces steering effort and lessens the attachment resistance movement when in contact with the ground. The amount of chain pulled through the keyhole determines the amount of weight being transferred. To increase, lift the ring off the holder and while raising the front hitch, pull the chain through the hole and place the chain into the desired hole location. To decrease, raise the front hitch to release the tension on the chain and then lift the chain while lowering the hitch. 
Remember, weight transfer is only functional when the front hitch is in the float position. Selecting the proper amount of weight to transfer depends on the attachment being used, ground conditions, and operator preference. A lightweight attachment, such as the KA160 power blower, will stay up when in the float position with full weight transfer on. With full weight transfer on and mowing in the float position, the mower may not come down quickly enough when cresting a knoll or mowing uneven lawn. Weight transfer must be reduced or speed must be lowered. Using full weight transfer with a slip scoop will allow the tractor to lift more weight. However, down pressure must then be used to lower the scoop when empty. The biggest value of the weight transfer system is best realized when mowing on slopes. With weight transfer, traction, stability, and performance are increased. Minute Mount Hitch System Lower the tractor front hitch and drive the tractor slowly forward to engage the arms with the attachment hitch arms and raise the hitch until the arms are parallel and complete the engagement. Engage the attachment locking lever. Install the drive belts and hoses if required. Tighten the PTO belt tension lever. To remove the attachment, park the tractor and remove hoses and drive belt as required. Release the attachment locking lever and back away from the attachment. Additional attaching and detaching information will be shown later in this video in the attachment section. High and low range shift lever. In low range, the lever is in the forward position. High range is the rear position. Low range should always be used when performing tasks which require a significant amount of traction such as digging, blading, pulling heavy loads, or operating on slopes. High range may be used for tasks which do not require substantial traction such as transport, general mowing, and leaf blowing. Before shifting from one range to another, always move the tractor to a level area. Never shift from one range to the other while under load, moving, or on a slope. Always confirm that the high-low shift lever is completely engaged into the locked position at the ends of the shift stroke. A forward or backward movement of the SDLA lever or a side-to-side -side rotation of the steering wheel may be required to complete the engagement of the transaxle gears and allow the lever to move into the locked position. If the tractor needs to be moved without the engine running, it is important to remember to place the high-low shift lever in the neutral position located in the middle of the shift stroke. With the shift lever in neutral, the tractor can freewheel when the parking brake is off. Use extreme caution and only push or tow for a short distance at slow speeds. Failure to place the high-low shift lever in neutral will result in damage to the hydraulic system.